welcome to our webinar titled A New Turn in Peptide Purification, which is presented by Bachem in collaboration with Belintic. Uh, my name is Eric, and I will guide you to, through the presentation. Uh, I would like to start out and give a short presentation, a uh, short info about Bachem. Uh, we are a uh, leading innovation-driven company specializing in the development and manufacture of peptides and oligonucleotides. Uh, we have 50 years of experience in the business and provide a wide variety of products for research applications, clinical development, and commercial supply to our partners in the pharmaceutical and biotechnology sector. We also uh, provide a wide range of other services. Um, we are headquartered in Switzerland, but have locations all over the globe, and we're listed on the Swiss Stock Exchange. Um, now, for a short part about me, as I said, my name is Eric. I'm a sales manager, custom synthesis at Bachem. Uh, I'm located in Switzerland, and I'm the partner for our customers in Germany, Scandinavia, and Asia in the area of non-GMP peptides, so diagnostics, cosmetics, and R&D peptides. Uh, please reach out to me if you have any need for peptides, uh, even if you don't fit the bill quite right. Uh, I will make sure that you get a proper answer uh, in the fastest time possible. Um, now we have a short poll to get to know you a bit better. And we would like to know, do you have experience with peptide purification? Um, there should be uh, the option to answer right now on your screen. Please let us know. Um, if you already had um, uh, peptide purification issues, if you had no issues, if you're planning on um, purifying peptides, or if you're just here to learn more about new technologies. Um, so the answers should be rolling in right now. And depending on your feedback, we'll try to make sure that you learn everything that you need to know. Great, so the answers are in, we have a quite heterogeneous mixture. That's great. So I think we'll, we'll try to, to, to uh, cover all areas necessary for you and make sure that yeah, each of you gets the information they need. Uh, before doing that, uh, I would to like uh, uh, do a quick words about our service that, uh, that we offer. Uh, we have three areas uh, in which we uh, group our services. This is research, research and specialties, CMC development, and commercialized APIs. And this, this little circle really shows you why Bachem is such a good partner for you and your peptide production. We can move seamlessly from one area to the other. So if we develop something in the research part, we can then apply it for CMC development or commercial um, APIs. Today, we're gonna present you some work done in our research sector. And this was done at our site in St. Helens in the UK. This is the little white square you can see in the middle here. This is our non-GMP manufacturing site, our special uh, center of excellence for custom peptides and catalog peptides. Uh, we also have some other sites upon the globe. So the little yellow squares you see are our GMP sites and the other white square is our sales office in Japan, which serves our API customers in the Asia Pacific region. Um, before coming to the talk, I would like to do a bit of housekeeping rules here. So you may have already noticed you don't have a mute button, you don't have a video share button. Um, please be ensured nobody can hear you, nobody can see you. So I, I'm always a bit uncomfortable in a Zoom call where I don't, uh, uh, can change anything, but really we can't hear you, nobody else can hear you. If you have questions during about the topic of the talk, please raise it in the Q&A section and we'll cover it at the end of the talk. If you need immediate support, please use the chat option and we'll try to help you with any issues you may be having. Um, before, uh, and now I'm gonna introduce the speakers to you. You can already see them. Um, so we have Gavin Noble here, who he's an R&D chemist from our site in the UK. Uh, his primary focus is investigating new production methods and uh, helping our synthesis and purification department if they run into any troubles, perhaps with peptide purification. Um, he has been with Bachem since 2014. Um, before joining Bachem, he uh, was a postdoc at the University of Notre Dame in the USA, where, where he researched peptide targeted liposome nanoparticles for cancer and antimalarial therapies. 
And before that, he obtained his PhD from the University of Manchester, where he performed research uh, into protein and enzyme activity at synthetic liposome surfaces. He has published several peer-reviewed articles in high-impact journals with over 600 citations. And we're very happy that from Berlin Tech, uh, Dr. Robert Zitterbart is, uh, is joining us. He's the co-founder and head of R&D at Berlin Tech, and is, he is focusing on developing linker systems to purify and modify peptides. Uh, he has almost a decade of experience in the development of peptide purification technologies and did his diploma uh, with Peter Fallhart at UC Berkeley and afterwards earned his PhD at the Humboldt University in Berlin in the group of Oliver Seitz. Uh, he has also successfully published many articles in peer reviewed journal and is really a big authority on the, on the field of peptide purification. Very happy that he can join us. Uh, and now, before I give the words to them, I would like to give a short history lesson. Uh, what uh, happened at the, uh, uh, at the collaboration between Belintic and Bachem. So uh, Belintic is a strong actor in the field of peptide purification and a big innovator. And Bachem uh, saw this as an opportunity to explore new possibilities for the development of peptide uh, and peptide APIs in general. Uh, with our both companies have a strong focus on serving our customers by offering innovative technologies. And this is why we have established a sustainable partnership from the get-go. Um, Bachem is a great partner for Belintec because we, they can transfer customer projects from development right onto a production scale where Bachem is a, the best choice since we have large scale production capacities and long standing experience in API production. And both companies are driven by a desire to inter innovate, to be competitive, and which is why this has worked out so great. Um, now, yes. So now, before I hand over to them, uh, quick agenda. Uh, Robert is going to start. He's going to present Belintec uh, and the peptide easy claim technology and give an overview of the application in a parallel purification of a peptide set. Afterwards, Gavin is going to take over and he's going to show the work performed at Bachem UK. He's going to go into the advantages and disadvantages of base labile linkers and then going to show the working principle of the newly developed reductively cleavable linker. And afterwards, hopefully, we'll have some time for fruitful Q&A sessions. So please send in your questions as they come along. Okay, now I would like to hand over to Robert. Um, thank you, Eric, for the kind introduction and the flattering words. <laughs> and uh, thank you all the attendees for attending and Bachem for organizing this uh, nice webinar. So I'm going to talk about the Belintics Peptide Easy Clean technology in short pack. I'm Robert Sitterbutt, as Eric mentioned, so co-founder and head of R&D here at Belintic. So who are we um, at Belintic? Oh, sorry. So we are um, an independent chemistry for healthcare enterprise. We are located in Berlin and we have a strong background in peptide and organic chemistry. Um, our current offer around the peptide easy clean technology is, uh, can be found in kit products and services, as you will see on the next slide. So first starting on the right side. Um, so we have three categories of kit products. Um, first, the research kits. They come with pre-packed cartridges, as you can see here, and with all chemicals um, needed for the purification, also with a pack linker. Um, so they are ready to use, basically. Um, also, we do, um, provide developer kits. These are a more bulk material um, kits, so you can whether use them for um, like a few peptides in larger quantities or many, many peptides in smaller quantities. And uh, going to many, many peptides is an uh, ideal kit for high, thr high throughput purification. It's obviously the high thr throughput kit that we provide. Um, so we provide two kits, um, whether to purify 48 times 25 micromole or 96 times 10 micromole in in a plate format. I'm going to talk about this also in more detail later. Additionally, to the kit products, we also offer services 
Um, these include implementation services, linker molecule design, protocol development, and also project collaboration for a certain um, application for certain peptides. Um, so my talk is going to focus on the parallel and therefore rapid peptide purification. But why do you, why do we need many peptides rapidly? So maybe it's a little bit slow now, um, but maybe you will recognize this guy here. It's uh, a SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus that has changed our lives um, for now over a year now. And if we want to investigate this virus to understand its function, I mean now of particular interest, the, the uh, roles of the mutations and the spike protein that you can see here um, at the surface. Um, it's just very helpful if you can synthesize many peptides because these proteins, like for example, the spike protein, consists of many peptides. So if you chop down the protein into peptides to understand the function of the protein, then you end up with thousands of peptides. So, and we want to have them fast and we want to have them purified. So our technology can do it. I will show you how. So um, maybe some of you have seen the in the introduction video already um, a little video from us um, explaining the technology in detail. Afterwards, um, Maybe tomorrow the uh, PDF will be sent out to the attendees um, where you can click this link here. Also, if you watch it on YouTube, the, the link to our uh, explanatory video will be in the description. So our technology is based on the PEC linker here. It's a small molecule and it's reductively cleavable. This enables a side reaction free um, procedure. It's patented and it's available in multi-kilogram scale also for GMP production of peptides. It consists basically of three parts. So the first part here is a box protected oxyamine as a, as a catch tag for immobilization of the peptide or of catching of the peptide. And the second part is a cleavable unit here um, is an aryl A site core. So the A site is going to be reduced in the reduction step. And here is the anchorage to the peptide um, featuring a leaving group for coupling it to the end terminus of the peptide. So um, for now, I'm not going into much detail on the chemistry um, since Gavin in his talk will talk more about the chemistry, but here's just the basic principle of the peptide easy clean technology. So in solid phase peptide synthesis as PPS, you assemble your peptide of choice by adding amino acids after each other. So um, it's very important for our technology that you cap unreacted amino groups after amino acid coupling. So imagine you have like a, like a tenmer sequence and after uh, five amino acids coupling is difficult. So the uh, six amino acid won't couple well, but if you cap, they, they are, these sequences are blocked by this red square. Thereafter, you apply our linker here shown as this uh, green circle. And this will selectively only couple to the full length peptide. Thereafter, you can perform your desired um, TFA cleavage and then dissolve the crude mixture of the linker modified um, peptide and the truncations and other synthetic dirt inside. So you apply this to a activated filter material. We use agarose, uh, cross-linked agarose, since it's fairly um, cheap and uh, has, a, has a long storage um, time and high loading capacity and also shows very um, little un unspecific binding of peptides and other stuff. So in the catch step or immobilization step, the peptide is caught on the, on the beads and all the synthetic dirt and truncations can be washed out. Thereafter follows the reduction of the linker, um, wash out of the reductive agent, and the final release is done by weak acids, and you get the purified peptide. And um, so we want to show you the working principle of, of this on a, um, in a case study of a new antigen set of 20 peptides. So um, the, the process currently manually, 
So the work I've going, I'm going to show you has been done in this vacuum manifold. And we are also working towards automating the system, but currently it's uh, manual. Also, how it works right now, you can also click the link later on also or follow the YouTube description. Um, okay. Um, so we just published a paper together with Gavin also in chemical science. There you can find all the details about um, this new antigen set as well. So therefore, I just want to highlight one particular peptide to make it very clear to you how it, how it looks and feels. So again, you start at the SPPS, assemble your peptide. Then you can do a trial or mini cleavage. And then you see for this particular peptide, you have a purity of 42%. Then linker coupling is performed also automatically on the synthesizer. So usually you don't see this anymore uh, you just, because after you do the final cleavage, you see the linker on chrome to gram here. And the, the um, peptide of interest shows a little shift in retention time to the right side. And then you dissolve this crude mixture and put it on the cartridges as shown here. And uh, you, you may want to observe the supernatant of the immobilization step. And then usually it looks uh, like this after 90 minutes, also in this case, that the linker modified peptide is completely gone. Uh, all, only the truncations remain in the super, supernatant. Then you do additional washing. And then you uh, release the peptide again by linker cleavage. The linker stays on the filter material. And you get your um, purified peptide without trace of the linker and also only protons inside as a cleavage stimulus. So it's uh, really um, contamination free. So in this um, set of 20 peptides, we increase the average purity from 53 to 89%. And the recovery was also good. Um, uh, uh, average recovery of 72%, ranging from 45 to 100%. And the method showed uh, general applicability since the uh, um, properties of the peptides we purified were quite different. Different. Also, I want to emphasize that uh, PEC is really a one size fits all solution. So you don't have to think about your peptides anymore. You just can just purify them. And um, since we developed it in a way that you can purify any peptide um, and there is no method development needed for a particular peptide. So in this case, for the 20 peptides, um, it took three hours, active hours, to purify those and three passive hours where you could do other stuff in between. So, but if you want to purify even more peptides than 24, um, we offer this high throughput purification in plate format. How does this look like? Um, it also starts with a, a solid phase peptide synthesis, SPPS on synthesizers. You can do it in plate format or also in other um, parallel peptide synthesizers. Again, the linker is coupled at the synthesizer. And then after TFA cleavage and um, precipitation and dissolution, the, the real purification is done again in plate format. That's the plates we provide. They are filled with the agarose material. So the peptides are caught in, in the wells and um, can be purified then um, with this vacuum manifold that we also provide. And then um, the peptides can be eluted after, after release. And you can take your uh, analytical electrodes directly out of this elution. And, and then you lyophilize the whole plate and get your um, desired peptides as a lyophilize, uh, lyophilizate in, in this plate. Don't get tricked here. These um, rows were intentionally left um, empty in the development phase. Also in the development phase, we um, purified a library for Professor Stephen Cox from the University of Durham in UK. And so, so we purified 96 peptides. Um, they had a crude purity, um, a mean crude purity um, of 67%, but a broad range of purities. Um, after the purification, um, the, the mean purity was 87% and the, um, the purity was um, more narrow then. Um, also, this was actually a tricky, tricky set because almost all peptides, um, 76%, um, no, 67 of 96%, um, percent, uh, 
of the 96 peptides had a DG sequence. So they were prone to aspartamide um, formation. So um, just to emphasize that we also in the corona context did some custom library synthesis to help to fight corona. We are not allowed to talk about details, but um, those libraries came out even cleaner than what I showed you before. So only one peptide and these two libraries uh, had a purity below 80%. And also those peptides performed very well in biological ass assays. So if you have not understood the technology um, or the chemical details, um, I just want to convey this message here that you can also see peptide um, uh, the PEC technology as a peptide dishwasher. So um, imagine you have a cluttery kitchen with lots of dirty dishes. All you wish for is a dishwasher, right? To put your dirty dishes inside and then the dishwasher is cleaning your dishes in parallel. And that's exactly what PEC does with peptides. So it's, um, it's just a parallel process uh, where you don't have to think about, about your peptides, just purify them in parallel. Yeah. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I hope there are many questions. Don't hesitate to ask them in the Q&A session. And now the control is giving to Gavin. And thank you. OK, thank you, Robert. I'm in control now. Um, my name is Gavin Noble, research and development chemist at BACM UK. And I'm going to go through the development of the, the current generation of the reductively cleavable linker that resulted from our collaboration. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to just give a, a brief introduction of BACM UK to give everyone an idea of why the research was handled here. Um, and so, as Eric mentioned, we're the Centre of Excellence for Peptide Manufacturing. Uh, we are ISO 13485 certified, which is the uh, quality management system for medical devices certification. Uh, this means we are able to fulfill several of BACM's product lines um, with great confidence, and those being research grade chemicals, um, custom synthesis of peptides and at non GMP uh, state and also fulfilling several of BACM's catalog products that you can see on our, on our website. And as well as these, we also have a, a large uh, customer uh, requirements for peptide medical devices and, and cosmetics as well. Um, and in order to fulfill this, uh, we have a great expect, uh, expertise in, uh, in really efficient production. So as you can see, we are we produce many, many peptides per year. Um, I think 1,400 last year. Um, so in order to fulfill that, we need really quick, robust production methods. And we have a, a suite of um, automated peptide synthesizers and uh, high-tech purification equipment to rapidly uh, produce peptides, but also maintaining really high purity. So typically we offer um, above 95% purity. Um, and also we, we are well versed in a wide variety of peptide modifications such as uh, dye labeling, stapling, PEG, uh, PEG modifications, you name it. We, we've probably had a go at it. And we regularly uh, produce these peptides. So with all this in mind, uh, it, was, it was seen that PEG would be a, a really great fit to BACM UK. Um, as it could fit alongside our existing workflow. And in context of the uh, 360 degree model, um, I guess all of this shows that we fit into the research and specialties um, corner of the, the circle. Um, but we, we also have some interaction with other backend sites. And I guess we dip our toe into CMC development through collaboration and information exchange with our other sites. So as Eric introduced, um, why, why us and also the initial meeting. So what we agreed with um, is that we needed uh, a universally applicable system and it needed to be uh, robust and reliable. 
and we also aligned our our synthesis and purification methods so that we're on the same page when we're looking at impurities, etc. Um, just for consistency. And the state of play initially was the the base label linker, so the first generation of I think of uh, Belintix, uh catch and release technology. So um, the base label link is shown here, um, and it's coupled to the the peptide while it's still on resin using simple chemistry. So the leaving group um, is already on the linker, so you just have to add a coactivator if, if necessary, and also base. Um, <clears throat> and then after TFA cleavage, you're left with your linker modified peptides and all uh, truncated acetylated impurities that are not functionalized with the, the catch resin, uh, sorry, the catch linker. Um, and then after a mobilization and washing steps that Robert introduced, you treat the uh, linker tagged uh, peptide uh, on the solid phase with the uh, with a strong base such as uh, dimethylamine, and this this rapidly re releases the peptide um, within two hours for most cases. And at high pH, it's extremely rapid. And this um, this concept was introduced in the in the paper in the Journal of Peptide Science in 2019, um, where Backchem provided um, research materials for. Um, so in order to investigate this, this base label linker, what we did at Backchem UK is synthesized a group of peptides. So a panel of 12, uh, where it, which is a mixture of hydrophobic catalog um, peptides that we have available and also some quite challenging acidic peptides. Um, and they had a representative length of 20 amino acids. We made them at millimole scale using our automated peptide synthesis uh, equipment and then provided uh, resin for modification at Belintic whilst retaining some back MUK to do our own experiments. Um, and what we did find is that across the board, we had a a decent purity increase. So going from here to here, we have largely consistent increases, but um, a few peptides that were that didn't behave and uh, showed um, uh, lower purity or um, showed no purity increase. And there were certain problematic sequences. So the first instance is the if anyone's worked with amyloid proteins fragments, then they know they're extremely hydrophobic. And one of the first issues was, um, yeah, difficult solubility. But that's been subsequently investigated and improved. Um, but there are also several base induced side reactions. So for um, peptides, I think eight, nine, and 11, there were several base induced side reactions which compromised the purity, although it might. Although we got an increase in, in peptide 11, there was um, it's, it wasn't as good as what it, we thought it could be. So one interesting aspect of this, despite the base-induced side reactions, is that we uh, found a, a really nice example of where the technology could be really helpful for, for us at Backham UK. So, a closer inspection of this histone peptide, um, we saw co-eluting impurities, which were evidenced by LCMS. So the, the HPLC chromatogram looks pretty nice, but underneath the, the main peak were several truncated um, peptide species, which were co-eluting using our standard HPLC conditions. Um, and then applying PEC, we could remove all of these um, chemoselectively. So if you look in the um, second chromatogram, LCMS, um, all of those impurities are, are now removed. Um, and this is extremely rapid. So we managed to achieve a purity of over 80%. And really um, key to us is that we could achieve very high purity if we applied PEC with LC. In that case, we could get over 98%. So the combination effect of these two orthogonal uh, methods was was really nice. So the, the chemoselective PEC plus the traditional LC separating things by uh, retention time 
give us a really nice system. Um, as, an, as an aside, we um, required three rounds of um, complementary LC to achieve over 98%. Um, but yeah, going from this, we had a nice system, we had great data, but we really wanted to solve the issue of base induced side reactions. And so Balintic, they went back to the drawing board and Robert came up with the system. Um, so moving away from the base label linker to in the new linker that Robert presented during the uh, initial slides. So in, in both cases, it retains the oxy I mean, catch tag. Um, so the, the linker chemistry is the same in that as aspect, and also the leaving group for the paranitrophenol for attachment to the SPPS resin is, is okay, it's the same. What, what differed is the uh, cleavable unit. So moving to the um, this para azido benzyl, which was uh, reducive, re reductively cleavable. So this, this system had been previously used in, in pro-drug development and, and also um, had had some similar applications in oligonucleotide production. And this is the first instance of it being used for peptide purification or particularly uh, a reductively cleavable catch and release linker system is the first example. So the, uh, the reductively cleavable linker is um, cleaved using a reducing agent um, in our examples, we, we showed triphenylphosphine and DTT and washing steps and final step is addition of acid. Uh, so just to go into a bit more chemical detail of the, this, the workflow. So the workflow is largely the same, which depending on which linker you use, especially for the first steps. But the, for the reductively cleavable linker, you typically do your SPPS with capping after every coupling step, cleave the um, linker modified peptide from the resin and um, with appropriate scavengers, then you immobilize onto the agarose resin. Um, the choice of solvent here is, is um, yeah, DMSO and, and citrate buffer works really well and can solubilize most peptides. So this is a really nice system. But where, where we differ from the base label linker is the uh, release step. So for the first instances, we use triphenophosphine um, in a Staudinger type reaction. So to give this aminophosphorane species here, so reducing the azide down. And then excess triphenophosphine is removed via washing steps. And then as the second part of the release, um, aqueous acid is added, which causes this 1,6 elimination cascade to occur. Therefore, uh, releasing your free peptide, the uh, linker still attached to the resin. This is stable and is not uh, broken down by the release conditions and also triphenylphosphine oxide. So all after elution with TFA, you get your peptide and you can do an optional step to remove the triphenylphosphine oxide via ether precipitation and or lyophilization. Uh, sorry, and lyophilization is, is a possibility as well if you, if you want a nice fluffy powder. Um, in addition, the, it's possible to use alternative reducing agents so, such as DTT. So in this case, um, we're able to, again, rapidly reduce the, the azide. Um, but in this case, the uh, aminophosphorane is not present. So all of the reducing agent and oxidized reducing agent is, is removed via the washing steps. So therefore, there's no tr there will be no trace of um, the reducing agent in the final product. And in the second step, uh, you can add aqueous acid and again it undergoes the same 1,6 elimination uh, reaction and gives you the nice peptide without any trace of reducing agent. Um, yeah, 
and an important feature actually is that the intermediate where you have reduced the azide to the amine, this is actually stable in neutral to basic conditions. Um, therefore, you can envisage it as a, a kind of safety catch. Um, and this aspect is being currently investigated by Blintic and Backham for further applications. So what was really satisfying is that this um, this new linker solved the problems with base labile um, side reactions. So the three peptides which previously showed um, problems with the, the basic release, um, the, the purity was increased from the base labile linker to the reductively cleavable linker and also the um, the nice control uh, peptide. Um, there was no uh, additional side reactions or compromise in purity of, of where it would really well. Um, however, we did see um, a loss in, in the recovery. And this we found out was due to some TFA instability of the linker modified peptide. So during the, the TFA cleavage, you could um, lose some of the, the linker from the, the peptide. Um, but this was solved, um, shown on, in our joint publication, that addition of electron withdrawing groups um, on these positions here um, could stabilize the, the linker towards TFA cleavage. So it functions in exactly the same way, it's just that the um, stabilization effect of these, the, the bromines that were added um, effectively stabilizes it to TFA. Um, and from our same peptides, we, uh, where we go from the non-brominated to the monobrominated, we retain the, the good purity that we observed and also improve the recovery. And indeed, there's some slight improvement over the original base label linker. Um, yeah, as an interesting aside, when both um, groups were brominated, the uh, linker molecule is, is so stable that uh, recovery is, is difficult using the standard conditions. Um, you can achieve this, but uh, it requires much stronger acid. So the, the, the kind of sweet spot was uh, monobromination of this parazido benzyl core. And as Robert showed, this, this molecule is the, the current working linker for the PEC system and is also commercially available uh, from various sources and it's available for use uh, for purification at Backham. So to give a summary and a uh, brief outlook of where we, where we can go with this. So the, the PEC um, purification system, the novel linker that was developed in our collaboration allows rapid purification to a high purity um, increasing your speed of the your typical bottleneck in uh, peptide purification um, and the uh, the reductively cleavable linker gives you a really nice platform for purification of complex peptides since though you can use uh, quite harsh solvents that might not be typically compatible with traditional LC systems. So it opens up doors for hydrophobic peptides or, or modified peptides in, in, in certain ways. Um, the, the linker is, is currently applicable for um, research grade purification uh, within BACAM. And yeah, with that, I'd like to hand back over to Eric for another poll question. Thank you very much, Gavin and Robert, for the, the great presentation. Um, now we would uh, like to do a bit of a survey how, how successful we were in our talk to convincing you that PAC technology is, is something that you, you need or that you would be interested in. So please let us know, do you think that PAC technology could help you in your ongoing or planned projects? Um, so yeah, you can either say that 
it's exactly what you need or that you're interested or that you might require some new uh, info, some more information on the technology. Uh, if this is the case, of course, we have the Q&A session coming up. We already have some questions rolling in, but please feel free uh, to add more and we'll try to cover as much as possible during the session. So the results are in and I think, yeah, we did a fairly good job. So uh, we're happy that you're interested in this technology. And uh, if you need more information, like about a quarter of our attendees, then I hope that the Q&A session will help you right now. So um, let's just move on. Uh, we already have some questions and I will just start. So I think our speakers are gonna come back online to help you with, with all your questions. So um, let's start with the first question, which is more of a, of a uh, summary. Uh, could you quickly explain again how to separate the short or degraded peptide, uh, peptides versus the correct ones with the PEC technology? Yeah, I will answer this um, if this is okay, Gavin. Uh, yeah, it's, it comes all to the capping. Um, so basically it, the separation takes place during the solid phase peptide synthesis. So you have to do efficient capping. That's also something we investigated in the first paper of the base label linker that Gavin was mentioning, and you can have a look in the supporting information. We found, for example, that um, aseptic anhydride and pyridine bases, so whether pyridine or lutidine, is very, very effective in capping. So if, if they don't cap, uh, then also the linker is not reacting with this uh, truncated, truncated sequence. So uh, therefore, it's just so whether it's kept or it's maybe even not kept, but it's just so so sterically hindered that it won't react. And then the SPPS just goes further till you have reached the last amino acid of your full length peptide. And then the linker is coupled to that. This enables the separation between short and long peptides. Very well. Great. Um, then is uh, the next question is actually directed directly to Robert. Um, um, how can you explain the suboptimal sub purification of admittedly just a few peptides? What were the limitations there? So, um, so there are some impurities we cannot remove, unfortunately. So uh, what we can efficiently remove is the truncations, obviously, but also um, impurities that are not um, being washed out by the ether, first ether precipitation. So if you have residual solvents or other reagents that are still in the solution, that's all removed. But in the full length peptide, uh, if there's something, some error occurs, if you get a reattached um, protecting group, for example, or if you has, have aspartamide, as I've shown in this uh, high throughput purification, this is not going to be re removed. So actually we are currently in the process of optimizing basically the solid phase um, peptide synthesis. For example, we are recommending cysteine as tert-butyl as a cysteine building block instead of cysteine tritule, since um, when you use cysteine as tert-butyl, you go, don't get any re-addition of protecting groups. Uh, therefore, the purity is largely increased. This is just an example. Also to prevent aspartamide formation by using a special building block is feasible. Um, so in the future, and if you go the PEC way um, and you and you say, okay, then I exchange certain building blocks and do certain measures, then the purities can be very good. Sounds good. Um, then we have another question, and this is, um, do you have similar solutions for purification of N-terminally modified peptides? Um, so if the N-terminus has, has, has a group on, on it, so can we modify a lysine or histidine-like Fmoclis pack or Fmoclis pack um, if the N-terminus of the peptide is not free? Um, yes, so um, the we and also customer of customers of us um, already had good experience with lysin, um, with um, orthogonal protected lysin. So, for example, lysin DDE or lysin MTT um, um, or MMT. So, um, ideally, you have the lysin as a last amino acid to clearly benefit from the technology. Um, then you can assemble your peptide of choice, uh, modify the N-terminus 
then detach the protecting group on Lysen and attach the linker there, and then it works perfectly. Um, if you don't have a Lysen there, um, um, we cannot help you right now. We are investigating also to put the pack linker on other residues. Mm -hmm. uh, there, we tested Zarin. It does work when it's really the last um, last residues. So Zarin and Treonine would be an option. Histidine, we have to see. Not tested yet. And as as Robert said, the, the position of the, the lice will be key. So if you have your lice towards the end terminus, that will be more beneficial than if it's towards the C terminus, because then that will yeah. catch any of the truncated impurities. Great. Um, then we have another question regarding the stability of the linker. And the question is, what's the maximum percentage of TFA in the cleavage cocktail where the linker is still stable? So I assume this is for the reductively cleavable linker. Yes, this was a, um, a big problem at the beginning. Um, so as Gavin um, showed, the first generation of the reductively cleavable linker was without bromination. And this was in the TFA cleavage cocktail, not as stable as we expected it to be. So we lost at least 20% of peptide uh, due to TFA degradation. And this was actually the reason we incorporated the bromination to make it more stable. And uh, so in, in this cocktail, it's very stable. You can also have a look in our paper that was mentioned here, uh, where we investigated this in a, in a standardized um, um, assay with propyl amine as a, as a peptide surrogate. Um, so in a cleavage cocktail, you can do anything. Um, so you can use your standard 95% uh, uh, peptide cleavage cocktail or 83 or whatever. Um, the only thing you cannot use is uh, uh, dimethyl sulfide and um, ammonium iodide together because it also it's so harshly reducing. It's also reducing the A site. Um, yeah, some people use it for methionine um, reduction, but I recommend you can use team esperomide and EDT also reduces methionine ox um, and that doesn't touch the linker. And maybe... I, if the question also was after reduction, so then after reduction, DTT reduction, the linker is primed for acidic release. And then the linker starts to decompose below pH 4. So it, it starts to take off at pH 2. But usually, so we use whether 40% TFA in water um, for the normal cartridge, cartridge purification or 2% of TFA in uh, water for the high throughput. Because there we just we don't ether precipitate, but just dilute the TFA content to lyophilize directly out of this mixture. Great. I, I'll also just post a link to the publication now in the chat box in case you you want to have a look at it later. Um, so now back to the Q and A. Um, so uh, the question is, uh, in which scale is purification with PEC currently possible? Um, what is the advantage for large scales versus HPLC purification regarding purity and price? Um, so, so we are currently in the process, process of scaling it up. Um, but from our experience so far is that it scales very well, just linearly. And from uh, what, when we talk to experts in the field, also with Bachem, they say that this is not always the case for HPLC purification, um, especially for difficult peptides. Um, so we are currently in a GMP process or where we enter a GMP process. And there's also an issue that the HPLC was not scalable, uh, but PEC is. Great. Um, then another question regarding um, the agarose filter. Can it be reused or should a new filter be used for each purification? So we, um, especially in the GMP context, uh, we recommend um, not to reuse it. Um, it is generally feasible to reuse it, but you would have to reactivate it. Um, and so we don't have a standard protocol for that yet. So uh, since the agarose is fairly fairly uh, inexpensive and also um, economically uh, friendly since it's um, it's a natural product from algaes um, and so we 
we recommend to throw it out after usage. Good. Um, then there's another question, um, which is more of a general, how pure can you get with the PEC technology uh, alone? Uh, I know it's depending on the peptide sequence, but what's your experience? Can you get purities of 95% or higher um, after linker attachment or is yeah. it? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so there's, there's no limit. So 100% is a physical limit um, and we reach this. Uh, quite often. So um, it's basically what we see, it depends all on the SPPS. So if the, and this is also one reason we work together with Bachem because they are re renowned, uh, renowned for uh, high quality synthesis. And so if you, if you use the good amino acid building blocks and you know what you do, you can reach 100% purity. That's feasible. You don't have you, you cannot have um, amino acid con contaminations or you should have um, avoid um, side reactions in, during SPPS or during TFA cleavage. Great. Um, then another question is, um, have you tried this technology with dendrimers or currently only with single chain peptides? We have not tried it with dendrimers. It's, there's one project where PEC is going to be used for dendrimers, but I have not heard anything back if they have tested uh, it yet. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, we, but, we have yeah. also not used this for dendrimers. Maybe you can envision some kind of multivalent effect where the yeah. mobilization is really quick and nice. Yeah, this could be the case. So the, if the person is still interested in using it for dendrimers, um, they can write me like, maybe in half a, half a year, <laughs> maybe I can tell more. <laughs> Great, maybe maybe we have another publication on this by then. That's, that's yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, then uh, I have one question and this is um, basically, um, does uh, PEC have a, have a limit in, in the peptide uh, sequence length? Um, no. So, Actually, we even think that longer peptides benefit even more from the technology. So uh, we have a case study out that you can also find on our homepage uh, where we purified an 84 mer peptide, also a, a challenging one. Um, so and there you could clearly see that like at, at the point where it eludes in the, HP, in the analytical HPLC, there was little, uh, just a little bump there and this was a peptide, so it would have been very difficult to purify this with HPLC. Since all the truncations, if one amino acid is missing, it's still very similar to the, to the long peptide. And, and therefore, and PEC can just pull it out. Um, so we, we think that longer peptides benefit even more from the technology than uh, shorter peptides. And there, in theory, there is no limit in length. That sounds very promising. Um, then a more technical question is, um, which capping mixture is best best to use? Is 20% acetic anhydride and 80% pyridine in DMF sufficient? Yeah, that's actually um, very good. Um, uh, so what we currently do is also cover, uh, as I said, in the supporting information of the first paper. So we have a four molar stock solution of acetic anhydride and pyridine. So this is like, it's like 82% for the acetic anhydride uh, volume percent and like like 30 something percent for the pyridine. And then the, the, the we program our synthesizer this way that it makes one-to-one -one, um, during the synthesis to make really sure that it's very fresh. But you can also pre-mix it as also okay um, before synthesis. Uh, and then the final concentration then is, yeah, like half of this, what I just said. So it's like 16% like acetic anhydride and like 17% like pyridine. So the, these values are already quite good <laughs> in the question. So very, yeah. very qualified. In, in question. our hands, we, we've, uh, we've used 20% acetic anhydride that was produced prior to starting the synthesis. So not pre not mixed in situ like like Robert said, but a, a standard solution that was prepared perhaps days uh, in advance to 
performing the SPPS and PEX still works works fine in that in that instance. Yeah, that's a clear benefit. If you have it in separate solutions, then you can store it longer. If you pre-mix, then you can you have to throw it out after synthesis, basically. Great. And I think with this, we have to come to an end since we are already one minute over our allotted time. So um, thank you all for your attendance. If we couldn't answer your question or if you have an, another question that comes to mind later, please send us an email uh, to webinar at uh, Of course, uh, obligatory, please follow us on social media. You can see below that we are present on all the major platforms. Uh, thank you all for your attendance. Thank you again for our, to our speakers. And we hope you enjoyed this webinar. We sure did. And yeah, have a great day.